Representative Mindy Fee, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today for our legislative update. Uh, I'm here in the district of the 37th district in East Petersburg with Dan Neff, who's the owner of S. Clyde Weaver. This is a place, Dan, that's near and dear to my heart. I am telling you, I have been coming here for years. I remember it was my first outing when I uh, had a baby and it was near Thanksgiving. So of course we had to head this way for treats and it's just been near and dear to me. The smells are incredible that come out of here, but you are the fourth Third, Third generation, generation. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, so indeed. tell us a little history of how S. Clyde Weaver got started. Okay, uh, my grandparents were married in 1920 and they uh, started the business in the Northern Market late in the year and they had uh, one market to start. And Where they was took Northern Market located? Human. Thank you, yes, in Lancaster on the second block north where the bus station is today okay. in that area and uh, they bought uh, and sold bacon, ham, dried beef, lemon and bologna were the early items. So uh, there was no refrigeration on the markets. They would display on a marble top counter with an ice block, oh. which helped to move the cool under the product, but it was not refrigerated. Not easy, so, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So listen, what I found interesting is I believe they got married and they started their business in the same year, right? Well, yes, uh, they uh, were married in August and my grandmother's father, my great-grandfather, Daniel Weaver, was from Lebanon County and he enticed them to go to California to start a bologna business in Pasadena and they made that trip west after the tobacco harvest and when they got to California Clyde realized real quickly he was not a California boy and so yeah. they uh, they did all the homesick uh, remedies and he didn't uh, he didn't buy it so they bought tickets back east by train and in December then they started the business so they had a very uh, busy oh, oh uh, I'll tell you what an entrepreneur that. spirit oh, right wow. yeah that was that was amazing That's so great. so today how many different locations are there we have eight farmers market locations and two stores the two stores are open six days a week here and on the Lidditz Pike in Lancaster and then we have uh, markets in the county and beyond uh, Roots Market, the closest one here, and then Central Market in Lancaster. We've been there since 1929, so we're 90 years there. And Burden Hand, out in the, uh, those three are in the county. Then outside of the county, we have York, West Shore, Lebanon, Allentown, and Wayne. That's so, great. And there are, there, most of those markets are on different days, right? Yes, and there are one, two, or three days. Uh, most of the activity is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but there's some early week markets as well. That's great. And how many employees are here? We have collectively uh, 225 employees on weekly payroll and in the holidays, uh, a few more. Oh, yeah, sure, many more, I'm <laughs> Going sure. Going faster. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. right. So how has it grown since you've been at the head? Wow. Um, my brother and I bought the business, uh, the other half of the business from my uncle in 1985, and uh, we uh, were at this location already. Uh, we did some additions to the building in 87, and then in 2003, this building, this cafe where we are now, was built, and uh, we moved into that in 04. Okay. And so that's been okay. the, the size growth. Uh, the number of markets has stayed about the same. We didn't increase in number of markets, but uh, have broadened our uh, uh, item num items and that kind of thing. Uh, we also have a, a wholesale cheddar business. Uh, we buy uh, Canadian cheddars at year old and age them to three or seven years for our own sale, but also for wholesale. Uh, so that's a, a Oh, the business okay. not seen sure, uh, absolutely. From, uh, from the real estate, so to speak. So uh, that's been, uh, we, we ship to uh, New England is our strongest area of interest. We sell to distributors, uh, specialty food distributors that sell to specialty cheese shops. So yeah, that's the, I'm the sure net. most people don't know that part, yeah. right? Uh, that's, uh, that's the unseen. Yeah, so. right, but right. Uh, we, we got into that because we were discovering cheddars that are customers here wanted 
And then others said, hey, how about us? So well, and it's delicious. Really I've had yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, when we're uh, 100 years old next year, the business will be 100 years old, uh, I have a special batch of cheddars back on the shelf that were made in 1999. Oh, you're kidding. And they'll be 21 years old <laughs> for the party. So, uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you're so going to put a celebration a for 100 years yeah, and, so, and well deserving. Yeah. Next year, we'll, we'll be doing that. So. That's yeah. great. great. So tell me about the smoking of the meats also. In the, in the early years, uh, Grandfather Weaver uh, started making boiled ham. It was, uh, he was doing boiled hams that were large hams, and he'd buy them uh, and put them into the smokehouse for a day, and then he'd chill them and put them into the cookers overnight and make boiled ham. That was one of the first lunch meats available to the county. It was okay. it was new. Before that it was bologna, dried beef, or none. Right, it was, yeah, right, so, right. so uh, they started uh, taking those to market, and that was really the flagship item through uh, the 30s and 40s uh, for the marketplace. And uh, in uh, 2010, uh, 2020, we're bringing out a 1920 cure flavor that will mimic that that type of flavor okay. that, that was used then. As far as smoking. Uh, Meats weren't available with a high extra smoke that we've liked over the years, so we would actually, in the early years, hang, we'd buy things and put them back in the smokehouse for a second smoke. And that was, uh, that was the 50s, 60s, 70s, so okay. pretty amazing. And uh, now we're able to, to buy and process things with full smoke the first time so we don't go through the second round. So. so this is the place where most people get to see, right? And right. this is where it's I always fun. come and buy all my goodies. But but if we can just stroll along here perhaps and you can kind of talk sure. about some of the products because you have a whole bakery item, right? Yes. With tons of, uh, of uh, folks in the back baking all those goodies. Yes. But then you yes. have a lot of homemade goods too that yes. I uh, can stop in and get, right? So what are some yeah. of your favorites? Uh, the pork barbecues, oh, our favorite. Sure. And uh, we've made uh, strombolis, other kinds of things uh, more recently. I picked them up we'll for have, my son, yeah. right? Uh, on a pasta salad is uh, a great, uh, add in, and of course, we have the uh, slaws and uh, red beet eggs and ham and salad, red. which you make it's, it's, yeah. it's so similar to my mother that I just oh, love it. Yeah, I great. love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we get to the imported cheeses, and uh, they're from all over the world and uh, local as well. So, so how do you determine what you bring into the store? What products you bring into the store? Uh, a lot of that is based on what we've sold and what people show new interest in. Okay. And uh, we get into the area of cheddars here. That's uh, a lot of interest. Uh, get into then the, uh, the chipped ham and uh, different ham varieties, sliced cheeses, uh, lots of things that are uh, um, unique and many that are general to, to the area. So do you so. do a lot of the taste testing of things that are oh, coming sure. in? Yes, we do the, the uh, recipes. We work on developing recipes and making sure they are like they used to be and uh, sweet bologna, bacon, dried beef, all of those have a history of maintaining the flavor profile from what it was and what it should be. So that's part of my job and uh, my sons Ben and Nate are helping in that as well, just keeping us up to uh, current uh, quality mm -hmm. and keeping it like it was and like it should be. Oh, so, that is that's, perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. So now I want to walk around behind mm -hmm. and uh, I hear there's a very old slicer, right? And we very can see old the slicer. old technology compared to the new one. Sure. So let's, let's go see. take a yeah. look. Great. So Dan, we're here with a, a machine that's probably close to 100 years old, right? This is one of the original machines yes, that they indeed. use to slice their meats and cheeses. This is this machine's older than me, and I'm old, so <laughs> here we go. That's uh, funny, I, and it still works, right? It and still we're going to show it. So let's right. see how okay. it works. I think it's fantastic. And this is the first time I've operated this machine for 50 years. I painted it 50 years ago when I was a teenager, and it's been on the shelf out in the store. And, and I here we go. Take it off the shelves. Yeah. Oh no, I'm excited. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, there's a story that goes with this. Oh, I'll tell you after we slice okay, a little bit sure. here, so we don't want to keep them in, in suspense. This was the the big improvement uh, over hand slicing. Wow, that thing is a little tight. Needs some oil. There we go. Oh my goodness. So that's. Uh, yeah, compared okay, to easy. it used yeah. to be hand slicing, <laughs> and then to this. And in the early years, they took the the boiled ham pieces to market 
warm out of the cookers and sliced them warm and sent them home oh, for you're a sandwich. Kidding. Yes, indeed. It's hard to imagine, yeah. but that, that, was, that was the deal. That so was the deal. Then came some refrigeration, some ice, and all that, but uh, it's been uh, quite a journey. That so is we'll go quite over. a journey. Yeah, that is a great machine. I'm glad yeah, it works thought, 40 oh, years yeah. later. And the other story was. Oh, yeah, let's hear the story. In the early years, they had one slicer in two markets. So Grandpa would hold this machine on the running board of an early touring car as they went from one market to the to other. The yes. So this was yeah. very important to move from place oh, yeah. to place. Yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah. Super. So, there it oh, is. Great. Okay. Okay, and uh, I'll introduce you to Tim Gottschall, my retail sure. manager. Sure, hi Tim, great yeah. to see yeah. you, yeah. So, we're uh, gonna look at some more slicers. This so is these are the, the slicers you use today? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this type of slicer is uh, special. This one does well at chipping. We use this for chipping sweet bologna and dry beef and uh, those kinds of items. That's my favorite yeah. thing, Dave. That's my favorite yeah. way to eat it, is chip. Yes, and that yeah. is something in the, that has come over the last 20, 30 years. Is that we, right? Yeah, we started thin slicing at uh, Central Market in the 60s, 70s, and then from there it, it went to other, you know, the other markets and has become more of how people want their items. So that's so, been a, a change. Yeah, so, and you, you slice to order here, right? Or, yes, yeah, yes. so mm -hmm. any way that people want it is... Uh, we got it. Yeah, that's super. Okay. All right, and let's then, move over yeah. to the cheese. Yeah, okay, and I'll let Tim go on to that one. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's a real uh, yeah. a maneuver there, isn't it? That machine itself is 30 or 40 years old. Oh, They're you're no kidding. longer made. So Neither how do that you one. fix them? We have a, a team that knows how knows to fix how them. To, yes, so yeah. that's uh, that's part of our fun, Listen, is keeping them going. You better so. make sure you uh, pass that knowledge on, right? Oh, we, to we the got next them coming. Generation. You bet. Mm -hmm. So, how long, Tim, have you been with uh, with with Weavers, with Best Buy uh, well, Weavers? My journey started. Uh, my dad was here for about 25 years. Uh, so he kind of got the door open for me, and I've been here about 11 years so far. About 11 years. Yeah. It's remarkable. I mean, your employees, There's. I talked to another gentleman that was here for 34 years, uh, right? Yep. So I always say that's why the sign of a great business, right? When the yeah. employees stay and the employees know, uh, love Every it, yeah, and yeah. the next generations keep coming in, yes. correct? Yeah. We've had several 50-year employees over over our time. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, there's uh, obviously we're older folk. I had to spend 50 years, but uh, no, still that's around, wonderful. So, yeah, that's All right, well, let's keep going towards the back because I'm okay. sure there's more goodies that well, we need to see back there and then what part of the production happens. Great, great. Let's go. Thanks. Thank Good to see you. So, a large part of your business is cheese, right? Yes. Um, Did you say large? I said <laughs> large. I have never seen a, a hunk of cheese quite like this. Okay. Talk about this. Tell, okay. Let's tell the folks how much this weighs. This weighs <laughs> a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds of cheese, okay, right? Just over, yes. <laughs> and uh, it's called a mammoth cheddar. And it's made in large vat and then put into a form in a cheesecloth with wax, so this is a very old time packaging kind of thing. Okay. The wax is the, is the container right. for that cheese. They actually brought it over in, on a forklift. I mean, we aren't yeah. moving this, right? No, not no, <laughs> not we, easily. No. no shoplifter could take that one by hand. No, so, so. no. So how long has this cheese been here and, and through the aging process? This cheese is uh, about four months old okay. and will be sold at Christmas. Uh, I have actually sold it to someone who's going to use it for a promotion. For so, a promotion, that's, yeah, I know. That's you a have white to cheddar. Yeah, a thousand pounds of cheese. So, I don't know. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> then on the history side, uh, we get back into the original shapes and sizes of cheddar. Right. This is a cheddar flat, and uh, that's what the size is at 37 pounds. It comes in a wooden box that size and shape. And then there is a cheddar cheddar. This is a 70 pound cheddar, and this is what my earliest memory goes back to oh, is that in the right? 1950s yes okay okay we bought these in in june after the dandelions were out of the grass so that the cheese would not be yellow oh. it needed to be white sure. and then we would put them into the basement of a storage aging room in east petersburg and then every week or two weeks at the most we would go and turn each one of those because as they aged, the whey would tend to droop 
and get to the bottom oh, of the cheese. So okay. Monday morning was time to time turn to turn the 80 cheeses. pounders. So, 80 pounds. I bet you yeah. were strong. You had a lot of muscles. Well, I was small <laughs> then yet, so I didn't have to help. But uh, uh, it, the story's told that when it was time to turn cheddars, Dad had trouble finding people who were yeah, ready to go. Available. They were always busy doing other things. So, so and that was done a, right here in East Petersburg, in, right? In East Petersburg on Lemon Street. On yes. Lemon Street. And the earliest shipments came in on the railroad to the old station out on State Road at the railroad. Okay. So they were shipped in by rail. And cheddar <laughs> ages for a long time. A long if time. You like. A good cheddar with proper moisture can age for many years. We sell three-year and seven-year cheddar in wholesale and to our retail, and that is aged and graded, and I'll show you a moment later how we do the grading for that. Okay. So uh, that's, we, we buy the cheddars young and then age them for the desired flavor range that we want. And that's Which, what makes us unique. Uh, yeah, and a tradition, you know, you yeah. keep the flavor and you control the flavor exactly as your folks and your customers yes. have always wanted. And that's the game. Yeah, yes. and that's it's wonderful. That's what we're all about. So then in the early years, due to the fact there were not plastic tubs, totes, plastic bags, and all the likes, right. we reused the, the containers, the boxes, for going to market. So I can show you that. Okay, Here sure. is how they shipped. You can see uh, on a pallet, uh, but in the early days, when it came on the train, they would have been sitting on the floor and they would have lifted each one out into a truck and then again into the basement. Of, yeah, they so didn't have tow lots, trucks and they no, didn't have pallets no, and no. they didn't, yeah, lots again, of, a lot of, of muscle. Work. Yeah, so, super. You know, why don't we just step to this and we'll finish with that. Okay, I've mentioned sure. this here of the, the containers. We would take those cheddar flat boxes and I was a boy, we would line these with paper, several sheets around the edge and then one in the middle. And this was used for taking chipped ham and chipped beef to market. Oh. Okay, lid on and away we go. That and was, there you would go. Yeah, and you moved it. a lot of those in your day. Yes, from indeed. Market to yep. Market. Yep. Yeah, I even sure. got a few nail splinters from, yeah. you know, from checking the bottoms. And, uh, but that's life as it goes. Yeah. Then we also had wooden boxes made that were suitable for two stacks of bacon, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. Those we also lined with paper on each end and then a long sheet between. And uh, we used a 20-inch paper, we still do, and I think that right goes back to when we needed 20-inch for the boxes. Yeah, so, because yeah. of... Uh, <laughs> so, that's it. Exactly the way so, they fit. So, so wait yeah. a second. Yeah. Earlier, you told me a great story yeah. about mm. the bacon from yeah. years past and mm. market. I want All you right. to share that with the, with the viewers. Okay. Story is told, don't know if it's true, that <laughs> at the end of a market day, there was only one sheet of bacon left. And it's always great to sell it all. So uh, unfortunately, it was packed down time. It was under the case, ready to go back. It was in the box, ready to go home. And just like one of these boxes. <clears throat> yep, you betcha. Yep. And so a customer came and said, I'd like a, a sheet of bacon. And the clerk showed the sheet of bacon. And the customer paused and said, would you have one a little leaner? Yeah. So the clerk put the bacon back in the box, shuffled around a bit, showed it again. How does that look? The customer said, oh, that's great. I'll take both of them. <laughs> <laughs> caught right there, caught, right? Yeah, red -handed. Oh, so that's wonderful. That's the bacon but, story. but years passed yeah, and you so. still had the boxes here. You yeah. know what I love too about S. Clyde Weavers <laughs> is that you keep the history here, right? No, you have you. you have when you look around the store, there's so many unique pieces that mm -hmm. show where you came from and what you're all about. Thank you. People yes. enjoy that. Good. Yeah. Okay. So okay, so this is what cheddar looks like today, right? Yes, As we're shipping. Not blocks. so much the yeah. round round, but now we go to rectangular. You're right. Over the years, uh, by an opportunity that, that came to us, we discovered uh, Canadian cheddars to be more apt for aging oh, okay. due to lower moisture. And so we've engaged a program of buying year old cheddar and aging for our uh, sales at three, seven years and 10 years. We have some 10 year. And for our anniversary next year, 2020, I have a number of blocks of 1999 cheddars, which oh. will be 21 years old. That's so I haven't tasted it for a couple of years, but uh, <laughs> we've uh, tasted others of near vintage. So that's on hold. It's like wine. It gets better with age sure. and it, it gets much higher flavor profile. So that's what we're going for is the very zesty, high, sharp, uh, distinct flavors. And uh, we grade the cheeses uh, at least yearly 
and compare them to what we want, of course, and uh, most How of them pass the test. How many folks in here actually can taste the cheese and know when, and that are experts in the field, say? We have a half a dozen people okay. that can, can nod yes or no, yes or, no or, or comment on flavors, so uh, that's where we go. Yeah. Now, this, this cheddar block is five years old, and uh, it's what we're selling in retail as super sharp Canadian cheddar okay. today. And when we grade it, we take this tool here, which is a cheese trier or plugger, and we go into the cheddar, into the block, and twist, like, and pull a plug. Oh, okay. There we go. So, okay, so you can see then, taste the whole way through, right? Yes. Then it goes the official part of tasting. Oh, well, Take that would be my there. job, I think, <laughs> I'm right? I'm sure it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And a cheese grater also will will test for texture and any aromas that may be uh, beneficial or contrary, and uh, look for uh, how smooth the cut is okay. on the on the plug. This one cuts smooth. Uh, which is to be desired, and uh, of course, then the the actual taste part of it, yeah, right? The, the taste mm. it, yeah. So mm. that it's one delicious. Has, yeah, right. That one makes it. Mm. That's sure that on. one's going to make it to the shelves, few, right? That, one goes, <laughs> that has a few crystals, even in from the the long age, picks up a few uh, lactate crystals okay. in, and a lot of people like that as an added uh, texture in the cheese. Oh, so that's that one's right on. I need to take a cheese a cheese lesson. Well, I need be to become a little bit more oh. of an expert on it. It's okay. delicious. Yeah. I know when it's when it's uh, yummy, and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. you go. Mm. Well, I'll sell you a block. You there can you start. go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Great. All right. Okay. Well, next uh, mm -hmm. we saw the cheeses, and yeah. I know we do the smoking of the meat. So how mm -hmm. about we head over to the smoker and talk let's a little go. bit about that? Let's go blow some smoke. Perfect. Thank Thanks. Let's head along. <laughs> so we're here by the smoker, and I got to tell you, the smell's incredible. I yeah, wish the folks out there could uh, could smell what I get to smell here. But tell me a little bit about what's inside the smoker. What are we doing? We have some hams here that are smoking for chipped ham. Okay. And we buy a fully cooked ham and give a smoke, which again takes us into that getting our desired flavor. And we put the hams in the smokehouse and give them several hours of smoke and add the flavor that goes with that. So I mean, sure. the flavor is the smoke sure. is the flavor. So I'll open up here and uh, we'll see what we uh, got in here. There should be some smoke blowing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They've been in for about an hour and they'll be in another hour and a half or two okay. to get a nice golden brown. Yeah, you can, see, you it can the start, see it starting. Right. Yes, sure. okay, sure. Okay, so that's the smoker. Yeah, Shut so that's make used sure we got uh, everything in back in shape. Out so, of the yeah. counter. And yeah, do you so. ship your hams and things? Yes, we ship hams uh, anywhere in the country. Listen, so, my brother uh, lives in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and there's not an Easter that goes by that uh, he's not on the phone with my mom and dad okay. and they're not shipping out yeah. hams to him, right? Okay. It's on the way. Yeah, it's yes, on the way. Right. And holidays yeah. are really big time for you, right? Yes. I mean, because yes. you not only, you know, you have your hams and you have your cheeses, but you package, and you package things beautifully, right? For right. There's a lot of corporate work that comes out of here, the people right. out of the gifts, and I bought them already for gifts for folks. So, yeah, there, there's a whole other end. To right, it. yeah. We do a lot of gift packs, especially in the holiday. And, of course, when everyone comes home for Christmas, they want the hometown goods, so we've got them. They know where to come for the usual uh, the sweet bone, the cheese, the ham, and all that goes with it. So, so as yummy as this is, one of the next places I want to go to, and I heard my favorite cookies being made today, is some sand tarts, right? They're on the table. All right, yeah, let's, let's go, go see, see those. <laughs> yes, thank you. So here we are at the sand tarts, and I'm telling you, it's like Christmas time in my mom's kitchen, right? It's it. all done by hand. These ladies are incredible, the work they do, but... Yeah, it reminds me of Christmas time. It's well, wonderful. Christmas is coming, but uh, this is where it starts. Sheet by sheet, we go through the sheeter mm -hmm. and onto the trays where the sand tarts are hand cut. And the glory of the sheeter is that it makes them all the same thickness, so they all bake the same color and crispness 
when they're in the oven. See, so. and let me tell you, that's very important because, and it's very important mm -hmm. to us folks who buy them because I got yelled at. I wasn't allowed to roll for many years at home, right? Because You're they were too thick. You have to have the perfect thinness on a sand tar. Grandma taught you well. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yes. <right. laughs> okay. Right. Yes, and then we, of course, this is sand tart day, but we also do uh, make whoopie pies, shoe fly pies and all other kinds of uh, breads and normal bakery items. But uh, yeah. certainly sand tarts, whoopie pies, shoe fly pies are the Lancaster County part. But really, you also use whatever fresh ingredients are out there. Like right now you have indeed. tons of peach pies yes, or whatever's yep. in yep. season, I know, mm -hmm. we can find right here, right? We do our best to use the local as and uh, put it in, so Yeah, that's, that's perfect. So. so next we have some special guests, right, that we want to go and that are pretty important to you. Yes, let's so go. So let's go meet them. How's that? Thank you. Yes, let's go. Thanks. So our special guest, right, this is fifth generation of the Weaver family. These are the two Neff boys. Yes. You want to introduce your grandsons? Sure, Lamar and Clayton. Hi, they're, guys. Yes, yeah, and they're uh, the newest, the uh, youngest cheese cutters we have. So. We're uh, anxious here to uh, take a little cut. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. are so cute yeah. and They're, they are before. ready. I was going to say, yeah, these guys is... look like experts, right? Yeah, they are yeah. ready to be the next generation. <laughs> okay, let's give it's it. will give you a knife here to hold. Okay, ready to hold the knife? Yeah, yeah that, you hold that one there. You hold this right here. There you go, sweetie. And you hold that up top there and yeah, you just keep it. And you're going to do this one here, okay? There we go. That's an old knife. There we go. Yeah. Okay. There we got it. There we mm -hmm. go. Ready? <laughs> Cutting the cheese, right? There we you are. gotta yep. get used to this idea. <laughs> All right, thank you. Perfect. Yeah. You guys are the best. All oh right. look how strong you are. Yep, that's it. Okay. Thank you. All said and done. Now here, you wanna help me cut a corner off here? Ready. Yeah. Talk about this cheese a little bit, Dan, okay. as we're going through there it. Because this one. isn't your typical Swiss, yeah. right? No, this is not typical Swiss. This, like our other uh, other products, has a special flavor. Part of that is gained by having the large eye formation and the extra aging. And we order Swiss that is made in 200-pound blocks. It's cut then into 50s, which we bring in here, and we cut then down into the retail sizes and the large chunks for chipping. Okay. But the fact that it has too many eyes for the trade uh, is unique. Uh, most packaging companies want a few eyes, but not many, so that it stays in a square piece. But we like the the large eyes and overset, and it's been that way since the 50s. Well, that's what makes so. you so unique. And Dan, yeah, I, I appreciate you taking the time and showing us around. I'll tell you. Okay. Um, I have such little gems, I always say, in the 37th district, and S. Clyde Weavers is definitely one of them. Well, so, we're glad you thank came. You. It's been fun to be together and uh, take a look at what we do and how we do it. Absolutely. And, uh, we look forward to seeing you around town. You so, bet. And I want to okay. thank you for joining us today for the legislative update. Uh, I'm in the Mannheim office or the Denver office. You can always reach out with any state related issues. Thanks. Have a great day.